Hey folks, in today's video, I wanna talk about the difference between task.winall and parallel.foreach and why you might use one versus the other. I have a small little demo set up that I'm just going to use as a quick example and then I'll get into the details of when to choose one versus the other and a little bit later. But for this example, all I've done is set up an API endpoint that's going to create a list of IDs from one to 10. And then I have two different methods. One is for win all and one is for the parallel.foreach. And in my win all method, all I'm saying is await task.win all, and then I'm going to select every ID and I'm going to run this process. And for my example, this process method is just going to wait for two seconds and then it's going to complete. So you could think of this process as an API call or a database call or anything that does some type of work. And then down in the parallel for each, it's going to take in the list of IDs as well. And then I'm going to set the max degree of parallelism to two. And then finally, I'm just going to loop over the list and I'm going to await the same process that I did for win all. In both of them, I am printing out a before and after in the console, just so we know when they start and when they complete. And let's just start by seeing the difference between these two. So what should happen here is when all should show all 10 being processed at the exact same time in about two seconds. And then the parallel dot for each will run and it will run batches of two, each taking two seconds for a total of five batches. Okay, I've cleared out the console and I will go ahead and run this again. So win all, all 10 are complete and now parallel for each, you'll see one and two, three and four, et cetera, et cetera. And now parallel for each is done. And it started out by saying before win all at 1141, and it completed at 11.41.03. So it completed all 10 of those processes in two seconds. It shows three, but that's probably just rounding differences. And then in the parallel for each, it started at 11.41.03, and it completed all 10 of them, and it completed at 11.41.13. So let's go ahead and look at the code and see what the main difference is between these two. So let's start with win all. So win all just basically says, go do all of these things all at once and tell me when they've all completed. So in this case, it's going to run that list of IDs, it's going to run the process, it's going to fire off that process call for all 10, and then once all 10 have completed, it's going to finish. And in our case, since the process takes two seconds for each one of those, it only takes two seconds total to complete that. And then in the parallel dot for each, for the way I have it set up, is I'm only setting a max degree of parallelism, say that 10 times fast, I'm only setting that to two. And the way that this works is you tell it for each, um, over your innumerable, in my case, it's a list of IDs. I'm going to pass in the different parallel options, which in my case, all I'm doing is telling it to do two at a time. And then you define a method, which in our case is just an anonymous function that's going to call that await process. So what it's going to do is it's going to process two of these at a time. So it will start with the two. And so once those two have completed, it'll do the next two and the next two and the next two and so on. And since we're doing two at a time, and there's 10 of them, so that's only five rounds, so that's why it took 10 seconds the first time to do it. One thing I wanna point out about the parallel dot for each before we move on, and that's that the parallel for each is going to use basically a queue system. So it's going to start with two of them, and once one of those finishes, it's going to bring in one more so that there's always two in the current process. So it's going to be shuffling in a new item all the time until it gets to the end, and then the last one finishes, and then it completes. Let's talk about now on when would you use win all and when would you use the parallel for each. I've added a little comment on kind of how to describe this, but the way that I've used these and the way that I've seen online is you generally want to use win all when you are processing batches of data that will not throttle or won't rate limit the destination that you're calling that process to. So for example, let's say that you want to make 10 API calls and you want to make them all at the same time and they're all going to the same API. Well, as long as that API can handle 10 simultaneous requests and there's no rate limits on calling that API, then you can fire off all 10 of those at once and wait for them to come back. And that's because when you're doing IO like that, input, output, you're not doing any work. All you're doing is firing off the request and waiting for it to come back. So in theory, there's a little bit of overhead in doing this, but you could call a thousand of these at one time and just wait for them to come back. If they all came back at the exact same time, you might have a problem processing all that data at once, but that's a different story. So I generally use win all when I have smaller batches of data that can all be sent at the same time and I can just wait for the response. And then for the parallel for each, the way that I've used it is it's a good option for processing that could possibly have an impact on the thing that you're doing. So for example, if you're going to make a thousand API calls or a thousand database calls at once, probably not a good idea. You probably wanna split that up into small batches. 
And another option is for doing light or medium CPU bound work that's on your local computer. So for example, let's say you have a bunch of images or a bunch of documents that you wanna convert into PDFs or some type of other conversion. Well, the server or the computer that your application is running on might be able to handle doing two or three at one time, but not 10 or 20 or 30. So parallel for each in that case is a good way of limiting that. The way that I generally think about it is if it's a small amount of things that I'm doing or it's not going to impact where it's going, I would use win all. If it's a lot of stuff or it could potentially have an impact on performance on the destination of where it's going, then use for each. But also just run some tests before you try it. You know, Assuming that you're not going to break the thing that you're calling, um, just go ahead and try throwing a bunch of stuff at it and see what happens. That is just kind of how I would use these two. Um, if you think I'm way wrong, I'm way you know off base, please tell me in the comments down below. I'm not an expert in this, so um, don't be too mean. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching, I'll catch you later.